Hello, my name is Rebecca Flowers. I've been an occupational therapist with specialty in pediatrics and in a neurological frame of reference called sensory integration for almost 35 years. I say that by way of telling you that I've had a lot of experience with working with babies and children. And within four years of graduation as an OT, I discovered another tool to add to my toolbox of knowledge that has helped me tremendously over the years. It's called craniosacral therapy. It's out of the osteopathic community and it was brought to us, it was popularized in the 1970s, the early 1970s by Dr. Upledger. It is the craniosacral system that we're going to be talking about is the one system in the body that houses the entire central nervous system. So we're talking brain, we're talking spinal cord. And that being said, there's very little in terms of problems that we have physically as well as socially, emotionally, because all of those things are brain function too. So there's very little that cannot be helped by craniosacral therapy. The premise of craniosacral therapy is that if we mobilize the bones, which by the way, Dr. Upledger with his team of researchers at Michigan State in the 70s proved there is movement that continues through the lifespan of all of the different bones at the sutures. That's what these wiggly squiggly lines are called. That movement and that system, that membrane system, is continuous all the way down to the tailbone. And it's continuous from the meninges lining the skull through the hole in the base of the skull all the way down. Let's take a minute to consider a hot topic these days, and that is laying the baby on their back to sleep. Many of you are parents who've been told that that's the optimal position for your baby to protect that baby from SIDS, sudden death syndrome. And you've been told that by your pediatrician. I'd like to give you another side of the story, speaking as a pediatric specialist for over 30 years, and I'm coming from that specialty. I think I'm speaking for the pediatric physical therapist as well. If you look at these 10 reasons, I want you to consider this in terms of taking a look at not just accepting at face value that that's the, most, that's the best optimal position. Let me give you some reasons why possibly it's not. So as we look at this, reason number one, if the baby sleeps on its back during the night, that minimizes the contact with mom so that the night feeds, which baby needs to optimally gain weight, are not happening the same way. Co-sleeping actually protects babies from SIDS. And by co-sleeping, I'm saying laying the baby on its side. That's a very natural position for those of you who are mothers currently, have been mothers, nursing a baby, laying the baby on its side as you are laying down is very, very natural. This has been done for centuries, okay? So it's protective from SIDS. Number two, back sleeping delays motor development. You've heard that from PTs and OTs possibly already, even speech therapists. Why? Because if you look at further down 
we in the numbers here we need to be on our tummies in order to um, develop our neck and shoulder control that's very very important we have to have that shoulder girdle strength becomes very important when it comes to handwriting and fine motor skills as we get older and we go into kindergarten and preschool so it delays motor development it also causes baby to learn a vertical orientation of their bodies rather than a rotational one think about that for a minute um, when you go back and you think of math and you think about the vertical planes, the horizontal plane, our bodies don't just move like robots. Most of our movements have a rotational component to them. And that is important in terms of brain development and the vestibular mechanism in the inner ear to have that orientation and not just that two-dimensional vertical plane it's important for that postural development and that too enables the baby to learn to reciprocally back and forth learn how to crawl and then to walk back sleeping can also cause some of the or be a contributing factor to the brachiocephaly which is the flattening of the back of the head the torticollis it it accentuates it if a baby already has a misshapen head that's flattened in one direction it can be worsened by keeping him in that same position so it's not just a cosmetic thing if you look at the uh, previously filmed videotape going um, back to misshapen heads and torticollis, I'll refer you back to that video segment. Um, the fact that it's a full body problem, it's not just cosmetically in the head. And we get both motor and cognitive delays that persist into school from back sleeping. So, Back sleeping also prevents babies from getting into a deep delta sleep. Um, that's the sleep state that we need for growth and rest and, and renewal of all the cells in our bodies. And then these babies that sleep only on their backs grow up to be toddlers and children who historically don't sleep well. Back sleeping causes low tongue posture and it even causes sleep apnea. And I know some of you, as adults, have had some experience with that. I personally, at my age, am having experience with that now. When I sleep on my back, and I, yes, I've had a sleep study done, I don't have sleep apnea laying on my side, but I do laying on my back because it causes low tongue posture. So ADHD, um, can have a big sleep apnea component to it. Back sleeping often um, necessitates swaddling too. And we're going to be talking in the next segment uh, when I talk about sensory processing. Uh, we're going to be talking about swaddling. Um, as a way to help calm the nervous system. But I want to say to you right now is that when swaddling persists beyond about three weeks, that begins to be problematic because it inhibits, as you can imagine, babies' motor function and awareness of their body. So... Back sleeping also deprives babies of that tummy time that they so need to develop. We've talked about that already in terms of neck and shoulder girdle control. It separates the mothers and babies, and we've already said that it deprives them of some much-needed sleep, both of them. 
And the other issue that you might not thought of, have thought about is that back sleeping also makes reflux worse. What is reflux? Reflux is simply the stomach contents coming up into the esophagus. And that cardiac sphincter that helps to control that um, is compromised because laying on the back is not a normal position for baby to sleep in. So I would screenshot this maybe and share it with other mothers, with other family members, um, people that you care about, just so they have a more informed decision about what position to put their babies in or your baby in to sleep. Thank you for your time.